Okay, let's imagine for a second that I lose all of my gains, okay? What would I do to get jacked again as fast as possible? I know, I already know everything, okay? So I've still got all my knowledge. How would I go from being out of shape or skinny to being jacked as fast as possible? That's what we're gonna cover in this video, okay? Because getting jacked is not difficult, okay? I see a lot of people who comment on these videos and say, oh, it's not worth it, or oh, it's too difficult. Getting jacked is easy, okay? Every single man should have a six pack minimum. Every single man should be jacked. Now, I just wanna define jacked because some people seem to think I'm talking about like Chris Bumstead level bodybuilder physique. That's not what I'm talking about. When I say jacked, I'm just talking about lean, muscular, you've got the shoulders, bicep veins, you've got visible abs. Every single man should have that, I believe, because it's so easy to do, okay? That's the first thing. The second thing is, it doesn't have to take forever. Yes, it's not gonna happen overnight, and it is gonna take some time, but if you do all the right actions, you can make results fairly quickly. How quickly uh, is gonna depend on genetics and so many other factors, it's impossible for me to tell you. That's the magic question that everyone wants to know is, oh, how long is it gonna take me to get abs? How long is it gonna take me to get jacked? Difficult to answer without monitoring your progress and knowing more about it, but it doesn't have to take a long time if you do everything correctly. So how do we do everything correctly? Well, that's what this video is about. So what would I do? The first thing I would do is I would actually get in the right mindset because this is where a lot of people go wrong is they expect too much of themselves too quickly and when their results don't line up with their expectations, they become disheartened and then eventually they end up quitting. So make a decision right now I, this is what I would do, is I would make a decision that I am gonna get in shape and I'm gonna figure out what to do and I don't care how long it's gonna take, I'm just gonna do it and I've made a decision. A lot of people have these desires, they have these wishes, like, oh, I want a six pack, oh, I want a nice relationship, oh, I wanna be rich, but they're just wishy-washy desires without any action backed up, okay? Make an actual decision, you decide, I'm going to do this, I'm going to figure it out no matter what, and if I'm not getting the results that I want, I'm going to figure out why and change my approach until I do get the results that I want. Okay, that would be the first thing I would do is make a decision um, to decide that you're going to get in shape, okay, and understand that it's not going to happen overnight, okay. Rome wasn't built in a day, and your physique won't be built in a day either, and the fact that it's difficult or seems difficult at the time if you don't know what to do is a good thing because that's what gives it value right so that would be the first thing now what else would i do well first of all let's talk about sleep okay because sleep is one of the biggest pillars that we need to talk about here pro arguably the most important pillar which is why i want to talk about it first okay so with regards to sleep i would have a consistent wake-up time seven days a week Every single day I would wake up at the same time. I would pick a time of day that I would wake up Monday to Sunday and I'd wake up at that time every single day of the week. Sure, I might go on a night out once in a while, but if I want to get jacked as fast as possible, I'm not going to be drinking alcohol that much. I'm not going to be doing very many late nights because remember, I want to get jacked as fast as possible and sleep is going to be a big component of that. So I would be waking up at the same time every single day. I'd roughly be going to the bed same time every single night. Obviously, there's exceptions to the rules. I would be tracking my sleep with something called Aura or Whoop, and this is going to give me feedback and data as to when I do make, make certain decisions, such as eat a meal close to bedtime, such as train later on close to bedtime, or drink alcohol. I'm going to get feedback as to how that is affecting my sleep, and it's effectively going to coach me on how to get better sleep. Uh, another thing that I would be doing is blocking blue light two to three hours before bed. I would buy some blue light blocking glasses. Uh, this is gonna help tremendously with your sleep. And one hour before bed, I wouldn't be using any electronics. I would just you know, listen to a podcast or read a book or do something like 
that. Okay, so that is sleep boxed off. Next thing I, will, I would do is I would make sure I'm going outside every single day, every single morning actually, and getting some natural daylight into my eyes. Ideally, you wanna do this in the morning. It's gonna reset your circadian rhythm. It's gonna be great for your sleep, but it's also gonna be great for many other bodily functions as well. It's gonna tell your body that the day is starting to produce the necessary hormones to get your body going okay that is something that is massively overlooked so many people these days are not spending any time outside they're going from their homes getting in the cars driving to the office spending eight hours in the office getting back in the cars driving home and going back in the house and we're not spending any time outside so i would make uh, a non-negotiable just to, to get 20 to 30 minutes of sunlight or daylight if it's not sunny where you are every single day also grounding i would do at least whilst i'm getting sunlight i would try and be grounded which is where you have your bare feet connected to the earth if you've never heard of this before it probably sounds a little bit like wishy-washy or hippie but this is proven by science that grounding reduces inflammation it's one of the best things you can do for your health as well as sleep and spending time in nature and it's gonna reduce overall inflammation. Now you're probably wondering, James, I thought we were talking about getting jacked and you're talking about all these health things. Well, the thing is, is the healthier you are, naturally, the more in shape you're gonna be, the easier it's gonna be for you to build muscle. And what a lot of people make the mistake of doing is trying to get in shape without first fixing their health. And once we fix your health and we focus on getting you healthy, as a byproduct of that, you will be in shape, right? So that is your sleep and your health boxed off. Next thing, let's talk about training, okay? And a lot of people, oh, get this, get this so wrong, okay? And I'm gonna try and dumb this down and make it as simple as possible. So with regards to training, how often would I train? I would work up to five times a week, okay? At the beginning, I might not be able to train five times a week just because my muscles are so new and I might be so sore. I might start out at three days a week and then after three or six months, I might go to four days a week. Eventually, I'd be working to five days a week. What training split would I follow? I would follow push, pull, legs, arms, and then the fifth day would be like a weak point area because when you start training, you're gonna notice that some muscle groups grow faster than others. And if you train every single muscle equally, eventually you're gonna have a disproportionate physique. Like for example, myself, I have not trained like a shoulder press in years. I don't do shrugs, I haven't done shrugs for years because for me, those muscles are quite developed in proportion to the rest of my physique. On the opposite side of things, my calves um, just, <laughs> are just non-existent. If you just saw from me from my back and you just saw my calves, it might not even look like I work out, okay? So I train my calves all the time, yet they still don't really want to grow. Uh, I train my chest quite a lot as well and my arms. So for you, there's going to be different muscles that you need to train more frequently than others. So if you were to do a push, pull, legs, arm split, and then you've got the fifth day to work on your weak area. I wouldn't train any more than five days a week. At that point, you're gonna be at risk of overtraining. I've tried six, I've tried seven, I've tried training twice a day. I feel like I make the most progress on training four or five times a week, okay? Um, with regards to steps, Let's just talk about that for a second. I would make sure I'm getting 10,000 steps per day. I honestly feel like you don't need to go much more than this. I wouldn't go much below this. There's so many benefits to taking steps and walking. It is literally so beneficial for your health and your body, and it's gonna help you stay in shape. So I would be aiming for 10,000 steps every single day. And now that we know your training split, um, with regards to sessions, I would keep every single session under one hour. I would never exceed one hour. In that hour, I'd be looking at doing, you know, maybe four to six exercises uh, per session. 
and I would probably be looking at doing three to four exercises per muscle group. In terms of sets, I would do anywhere from two to five sets. I would never really exceed five. Two would be the lowest that I would do. It would really depend on what my focus is. For example, when I do do, um, when I train my shoulders or when I do some lateral raises, I'm only doing a couple of sets because it's not really a focus for me. Whereas when I do, when I train my calves, I always do five sets because, you know, I want them to grow more. All right. So how many sets you do really isn't going to depend. It isn't going to matter too much. What matters the most? And this is where most people go wrong is the following. First of all, they don't perform the exercise correctly. Okay. Exercise execution, exercise execution. It's so important that you execute the exercise properly. Are you working the target muscle? When you go in the gym and you look around at people, I guarantee every single time I go in the gym, I see people who are doing an exercise incorrectly. And if you do an exercise incorrectly, you're going to at best make some gains, but at worst you will make zero gains whatsoever. Okay. So how do you execute the exercise properly? Well, this is going to take some time for you to learn, but you watch YouTube videos on how to perform the exercise and then you go and perform the exercise and you repeat that process. Okay. And you're working in sets. Because so when you have finished a set, you watch a video. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Got to do that. And then you go and perform the exercise again. And if you do that enough times, eventually you will build that mind muscle connection. Okay. Where you realize, Oh, if I perform the exercise this way, then I really feel it here. Right. So that is just going to take a little bit of time to figure out. Um, but that is the, the first way how people mess the biggest mistake that people make with their training. The second biggest way, uh, mistake that people make with their training is they simply do not train hard enough. Okay. So once you have exercise execution down, you just need to increase the intensity. As soon as you're confident that you know how to perform the exercise, then we need to gradually over time, increase the intensity. Okay. Now I like to keep all of my sets between like eight to 15. I, I, for me personally, I feel like I make more progress when I do like 12 to 15, something like that for you. It might be different, but for me, 12 to 15 seems to be the sweet spot. If I can do more than 15 reps, I will put the weight heavier. If I can only manage eight reps, I'll put the weight lighter on the next set. That's the general rule of thumb. At the end of the day, I don't really care about the number. I care more about how hard the muscle is being worked time under tension. Okay. So we've covered sleep, health, mindset, training. Let's talk about nutrition. Okay. Now I'm not going to tell you what to eat because for some reason, when it comes to nutrition and diet, people get so religious over, you know, this is the best diet. Oh, I should eat this. Oh, I should eat that. And look, I'll tell you right now, I've tried a vegan diet. I've tried a paleo diet. I've tried a carnivore diet. I have tried pretty much every single diet that kind of makes sense to me. I have tried at some point. Okay. Now, the point is you can make it work on any diet with a vegan diet. It might be difficult to get enough bioavailable protein, but if you want to eat a vegan diet, I'm not going to tell you, sorry, I got itchy nails. I'm not going to tell you to not eat it. Okay. So you want to eat vegan, fine, whatever general rule of thumb when it comes to diet, which I don't think anyone can argue against is just eat real foods. Okay. If it's got an ingredients label, with a long list of ingredients on, chances are that's probably not a good food to eat. Okay. So ask yourself, you know, if it doesn't need an ingredients label, it's probably good to eat. A chicken breast is a chicken breast. An egg is an egg. A carrot is a carrot. A banana is a banana, right? And a good frame of reference that I like to think about when I'm deciding, should I eat something or not is, did it grow in the ground? Did it run on the ground? Did it swim in the sea or did it fly in the air? If it did eat it, if it didn't 
might be better off not eating it okay and just generally i just look at the ingredients list if it's a short ingredients list and it all looks like natural ingredients by all means go for it but if it's a massive list of 30 ingredients that you can't pronounce i wouldn't i, I wouldn't be eating those foods to be honest so stick to real whole processed foods that's going to make a big difference for most people i find anywhere from two to four meals a day is works the best for my clients if they're getting towards the end of a fat loss phase we might go down to two meals uh, if we're getting towards the end of a gaining phase we might go to four meals i generally don't see any need to go to one meal a day although i have done that for quite a long time or even five meals a day which i've also done as well but i feel like for most people two to four meals will be a nice balance where you're not spending so much time eating or so much time in the kitchen and you still actually have a life outside of eating okay so that would be the first thing uh, is real foods two to four meals a day um i will be tracking my calories every single day uh i'm using an app called macro factor i'm not affiliated with them just out of all the apps that i've used i found that's the best one to use so i'd be tracking my calories every single day and macro factor also in macro factor i'd be weighing myself and i'd be tracking my weight every single morning and using a combination of tracking the food that we're consuming and tracking our weight and also taking progress photos every single week same time same place same lighting etc by tracking all of these metrics we can then take a systematic approach and that's how getting jacked becomes easy because it's logical it's predictable it's data driven we're not making decisions off emotion we're not guessing we're just looking at the facts and making decisions off that now how many calories i would eat would really depend on what my weight is and what my current physique was looking like but the general trend that i would take is if i had a belly and i had excess body fat somewhere even if i was still quite skinny i would aim to get rid of a lot of that belly fat first before i start going into a calorie surplus so how i would do that is maybe i would eat at maintenance and if maintenance calories were not getting rid of that body fat i might go a little bit below maintenance but a general rule of thumb is i would be around maintenance until i I'm like quite lean until I'm like, you know, sub 15%, maybe around 12% body fat, something like that. And at that point, then I would start going into a gaining phase where I would be in a, a small calorie surplus, three to 500 calories extra per day. Okay. The only way you're going to know this is by tracking your calories and over time you will know you know where your maintenance calories are at there are calculators online which can estimate this which will give you a starting point i'm not going to make a, i'm not going to go into that because you know i've got to keep this video quite short but there's other videos on my channel if you want to know how to do that so we're, we're tracking your calories we're eating real foods what else would i focus on well the two most important variables that i would focus on if we want to manipulate your body composition is total calories per day that's the first thing and is protein intake carbs and fats doesn't matter find whatever works best for you but protein i would make sure you're at least eating one gram per pound of body weight i've actually found for myself uh, i have a large appetite i don't have um problems eating i can eat a lot more than that typically pretty much every single day i exceed one gram per pound of body weight but that's just because it's easy for me to do but i would make sure that i am at least getting one gram per pound of body weight and my total calories are on point with where i want to be with regards to if i'm in a gaining phase or a fat loss phase okay so that is your sleep training diet nutrition alcohol uh, like i said before i would be limiting alcohol as much as possible i honestly feel like alcohol and weed and a lot of those other things just really hold you back if you want to get jacked as fast as possible just make a decision that you're just going to limit all those vices and all those things that aren't helping you just for a short period of time just to get your goals and then if you want to introduce some of those things back in later on 
then by all means go for it. But I think if you, once you do this for a while, you realize, oh, I don't actually want to drink alcohol that much, or I don't actually want to smoke weed or whatever. Now I'm not saying you can't have a life. You can definitely have a life and get jacked. And it really doesn't have to take a long, a long time at all. Okay. This can be done quite quickly when you do everything correctly and you start seeing results, your results become your motivation. It's very hard to be motivated when you're doing something you're not used to doing, like training, eating, etc., and you're not getting results. But as soon as you get to the point where you're seeing results, well, that becomes your drive, that becomes your motivation, and it's so much easier for you to stay on track, okay? So if you need any help with this, by the way, I do coaching. I will work with you one-on-one -on -one to help you hit your goals as fast as possible. You can try and do all this by yourself and, and you can do all this by yourself. You definitely don't need a coach, but it transformed my results when I got a coach and now I have the privilege to be able to help other people do the same. So if you need some help and you wanna go as fast as reasonably possible, uh, I would love to work with you. All the links are down below. And other than that, guys, I hope you found this video helpful and I'll talk to you in the next one.